everybody, and welcome to the Brog. We're actually at episode 79 now. And, uh, let's get past the initial, wow, you haven't blogged in a while, Adam. Wow, you've shaven your face and uh, look a little different. Let's get past that and move straight into the reason for my brog today. I feel like I'm recording this video on a potato right now. I feel like this is a freaking toaster or something. It's so irritating punching back into the whole technology ocean and realizing how out of date I am. Uh, as some of you may know, I don't have a Galaxy Android iPhone or whatever. I'm still using my old Motorola from 2005. There's no touch screen or anything. There's just a few buttons and that's it. And when it stops working, I will have to, I guess, punch back into this ocean of ever-evolving technology that, uh... I just got back from shopping and I feel a little overwhelmed. And, uh... I feel like... I usually have always thought, like, I'm never going to get a Mac, but after shopping today, I was actually considering getting a Mac to edit video. Um, some of you may be familiar with my other channel. I have an Adam2Joshua channel. On the main page of the blog here, it will say uh, random things. So I've been posting you know, random videos that I've got with this new, just give me one second and I'll grab it to show you, with this new uh, Canon, and so this is the, the Canon um, 100HS, so as you can see it's got a pretty big screen, and uh, picture in picture right there, didn't even have to do any video editing. Now the problem is, and this is the conversation I was having with pretty much everybody, every service guy that I talked to today, is in 2008, cameras like this weren't filming in HD. Like, you go camera shopping now, right? And you're looking for a camera. And you want to buy, okay, most cameras is what I'm getting at, film in HD, 720 or 1080p. If I uploaded this directly to my computer, my computer would probably have a heart attack. And this computer won't even work if I try to upload this. It just fuzzes out. Right now, my screen is choppy. Like the screen on this computer is choppy. I, I don't even know if this video is gonna pan out. This is why I haven't done the brog in a while because I'm getting frustrated that I need to update my computer, so I went computer shopping today, and I was looking for a new computer. What I may wind up with is a uh, Core i5-2400 mid-tower 480-watt power supply ASUS P8H61M R3 motherboard with a 8 gigabytes DDR3 HyperX 1600 memory LG DVD RW SATA integrated video 3D sound. Maybe go with the um, Windows operating system. I'll probably use a, one of the modern um, monitors I have. i probably get an extra 8 gigs of memory. Um, you know, I might do that. that. That'll run me just for the tower without the operating system or hard drive. $389.99. And I'm looking at, like, these Macs today, and I don't know if it's a fad or whatever, but uh, I was looking at a $2,000 Mac book, and it has comparable features to the what I just mentioned, and, you know, the few people that I talked to, I went to Best Buy and a few other places. Um, where else did I go? went to Zellers, which was a mistake. They don't sell computers at Zellers. I went to a few local computer shops. And uh, what I found is that 
I have been out of the technology, staying up with the Joneses computer technology game long enough that I am completely overwhelmed. I didn't I didn't walk away with a computer today from my shopping experience, but I wanted one, and I still want one, and I don't want to, you know, I got a, I got a bass, I got headphones, I got all the ability to multi-track record my own music, and the problem with technology now is that because this camera and ones like it are recording in HD, trying to edit this video on the computer that I'm using right now is like trying to use a potato to edit, edit a movie. It's just so frustrating that I have like two computers here. One is a quad core that doesn't work and one is the one I'm using right now, which is ancient, some ancient thing from 10 years ago. And really, I don't, I don't use this much during the day. So, I mean, I am checking like the news with this. So a pretty, pretty excessive screen and all that to uh, just check the news, but whatever. The other thing I wanted to talk about, other than my problems with computer shopping, which I'll have to sort out somehow, I might actually wind up with a Mac. I have friends trying to talk me out of it. I have friends trying to talk me into it. What I did realize was that it seems to be the go-to for everybody who's recording video. Funny story, while I was there, I used one of those desktop Macs with the gigantic screens with the Lion operating system, and I loaded up GarageBand and just thought, okay, while I'm here, I'll flick through it real quick and see, you know, how easy it is to use for a PC user. And uh, the thing froze on me in like three seconds, and I was like, "Wow, brand new, three thousand dollar PC, and it's free or Mac, and it's freezing." Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. I think it's pretty obvious by now that me and computers have a long-standing bromance. They love me. They hate me. They hate me. They love me. I. This screen is frozen right now, and I'm just assuming that this is recording. So, this is the problem. I can record all the video I want, and edit all the video I want, but it's not going to be HD. And now that now that technology is at the place that shooting in HD and capturing HD video is like the norm, that everybody can sort of get, do that, the editing software and the processing power and memory of your computer has to increase, right? Obviously, you can't edit HD video on a toaster oven, which is what I'm finding out. So if you look at any of my videos, what I've been doing is I had Sony Vegas and I was running Vegas, on, but on this computer, it li literally is like running it on a toaster oven. This computer just cannot handle Sony Vegas. It's a big program, takes up a lot of space, and you try to start chopping up video and splicing it. What I want to do is record a bass track put it in Vegas, record drums and put it under. I want to splice it all together, right? And I'm trying to do all this on a PC. Meanwhile, people on Macs are just like, what? <sighs> Easy, <laughs> done. And this is the frustration is like, okay, maybe I should switch to Mac. Okay, because maybe I'm, maybe I've missed something. Maybe I, I went wrong somewhere, I, I don't know. So I've been shopping today for a computer and today I was looking at Macs and I'm thinking, if it's easier to use, then it's easier to use. If it's gonna be easier, to do what I want to do, then whatever. Uh, so, if anybody has any ideas, email me because uh, the ones I were looking at, pretty expensive, but you get what you pay for, right? So, I'm still shopping. The other thing I wanted to talk about quickly while we're here, while I vented my frustration to you, on episode 79 of the Brog. Aside from, I have other video I have to post. I've edited, uh, sorry, I've filmed all this <coughs> chemtrail video from today. And I think I will post that somewhere. Like, this is ridiculous. It's right outside of Best Buy. These gigantic lines in the sky. Just all day. All day, this ridiculous haze outside. They're forcing winter, you know, for our own good. Don't you like winter? Well, we can't have winter because we're so close to the sun. Unless they chemtrail the sky nonstop. 
The other thing I want to talk about though was how much attention or how much of your life is dedicated to your body. A lot of people live in like this sleepwalking state where it's like they go to the job and they go home and they sleep. Do whatever they can, watch TV and start all over again. You're walking around this like permanently zombie-like state. And you need to break your trance somehow. And I, when I'm in the shower or brushing my teeth, I'm thinking, you know, there's like a clock going on in my head thinking like how much of my day is spent solely for the purpose of maintaining the body vehicle that I'm in. And for some people, their entire life is about their body, their entire life. Like this culture obviously encourages us to be like sexually minded and materialistic and competitively materialistic, greedy and desirous of lives that uh, seem Hollywood-esque. So I'm sure if pharmaceutical companies, big media, etc., etc., had their way, we would all be like materialistic, ridiculously insecure people because then they could sell you things <clears throat> and have them mold your character, right? But how much time do you spend in service to your body? Like if out of 24 hours, add up in your mind how much you would spend out of a 24-hour day solely existing and spent diverting all your energy into the purpose of your body like okay it's not wrong that you have to eat food it's not obviously i mean you have to eat you know you have to sleep so eating and sleeping out of a 24 hour day if you're healthy you know eight to ten hours would be great you know most people don't get that um if you're wondering how i'm 30 years old and don't look it it's because i've always mad <laughs> it's because <laughs> It's because I've always managed to, to try to, I've tried to get at least eight hours a night. That's important to me, you know, because we're in a coffee culture. I'm actually not drinking coffee. I'm a, it's hot apple cider, which is pretty much just sugar. But anyway, we live in a coffee culture that, you know, drink coffee all day. And it's sort of easy to get into that caffeinated lifestyle. And uh, I've been in it and I'm out of it now, so I know the difference. Um... But if you don't sleep enough, then you feel groggy and you need something to, like, prop you up and you need energy drinks and caffeine and etc., etc. Plus, when you're sleeping, you're healing your body. Backing up, up a bit. So you sleep, you eat. I mean, that's like 10 hours of a 24-hour day already, right? Now, the problem is, is that when people get home from work or whatever and you could look at work as being a service to body type thing because you're it depends on where your mind's at you know if you're working some people work solely to provide to put food on the table you've heard the expression or to provide for their family which isn't a bad thing i'm none of this is to crit critique you or or um just i'm trying to help you think and develop your soul and develop your spirit a little bit expand your mind you know if all you're doing for your entire life is service to your body and service to other people's bodies, what about you? What about the real you? What about you on the inside, your soul, your heart, your your spirit? What have you done to take care of your the real you, the you that was you when you were this small and the you that is you when you're this big now and the you that is going to be you once your body vehicle decides to give out? You know, you came into this world a tiny little speck, right? There's something inside of you that was powering this body that you were in, and now the body has grown, and the real you. What about the real you? The body is one thing. I mean, you can break your arm or cut, it, cut off your hand, and you're still you. So if all your time is spent taking care of, maintaining, and satisfying, pl placating or placating the body, what about you? Have you spent time with chicken soup for your soul or to meditate, as crazy as some of that sounds, but calming the outside noises, getting time to rest properly? What about your dreams? What about your hopes and aspirations? You know, when your best friend dies or like a movie celebrity that you like dies, 
You're still alive. That's you're, you're not them. I mean, some people need to hear this. You are not the movie star that you like or the musician that you emulate. You're you. You know, when they die, that's them dying. When you die, that's you dying. Nobody's going to be there holding your hand and crossing over that Rubicon of life and death with you. I mean, you came into this world sort of naked and alone and are leaving the same way you came in. So in between all that, I would encourage you to not solely make your life about food and clothing and the basic necessities that all everybody in this body ha in, a, in a body has to deal with. But what about the real you? Spend some time thinking about the real you and what you who you are and what you really want out of life. You know, I look at life a little bit differently. When I was 16 years old, I tried to end my own life. And I had this idea that I wanted to meet the maker. And, and I had a few questions that I thought, whoever this big guy is, I got some questions for him. I wasn't satisfied with life in general. And I thought, I want to talk to the, the architect of all this because... I'm going, I, don't, I want to deal with these middlemen. I'm going straight to the source. And that didn't exactly pan out for me. I'm still here. I'm still alive. And I've had three more near-death experiences since that day when I was 16. So I look at life a little bit differently, and I know that. Um, and I'm trying to help you. And I'm not trying to make you, like, any more depressed or sad. If you are depressed or sad, I'm sorry. But uh, spend some time and think about the real you and what you really want out of life while well, you're here. Some people say that the purpose of life on earth here is to learn how to develop your soul and to learn to live without envy, hate, or greed, to live with integrity and to love your friends and family, to become love, to mature your soul. And if that is a, a goal or, or the goal of life on this prison planet, um, in the technological repression that we're living in right now. We're technologically so repressed. It's, it's like unbelievable. Like a hundred years ago, we had wireless electron... Tesla invented wireless electricity that could be harnessed from the ionosphere all over the globe. J.P. Morgan and his cronies didn't exactly like that, so here we are a hundred years later still living in that suppressed bubble under the water of petroleum-based fossil fuels type copper wiring and wiring uh, everything like it's it's so bad it's worse than what you think it's it's a thousand times worse than what most people think but here we are so like we live in this world and we're although there are man-made spaceships and probably extraterrestrial spaceships that you'll never find out about or hear about in the mainstream news and then that would upset the whole apple cart and although there are all those things and i'm sure that there are people living humans from this earth living on other planets you and i may not ever get to see that stuff firsthand or get to live experience that stuff firsthand because we're under wraps and under control by these ridiculous control freak eugenicist minded rockefeller rock rothschilds offshore geo elites that see no East versus West and Coke versus Pepsi. They're like they're them and their family and the elite, the Illuminati or whatever underneath them um, and whoever influences them. So like as long as we're held into this sort of control system, prison planet, if you want to get even more scientific, you could say the Van Allen belt sort of radiation belt sort of hold us in a certain area of space. As long as we're stuck on this spaceship Earth, you might as well make the best of it, you know? And I mean really the best of it, not just like cake and circus or bread and circus or just like your entire life is about your body, but what if you don't learn the first time and you have to come back the second time and repeat repeat your uh, whole process of trying to learn to develop your soul? What if we don't get to go out into the universe and play with the other people until we've learned to mature our soul? What if? Have you even thought about these questions? I have, but that's me. Thanks for watching The Brog, episode 79. I'm sorry if this was choppy or looks like it was recorded on a potato. I'm working on getting a new computer. Check out my other channels. Go to adamjosh.com and you'll see more.
the Brog, episode 79. Alright, bye.